From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Mind. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Open Line. I'm Carrie Sharp. I'm glad you're joining us tonight. Thank you. We have a really interesting topic to bring you tonight. We are talking about women in agriculture. I don't think that we have ever done that before on Open Line. So sit by, take a listen, go ahead and get ready to give us your calls and questions too. Of course, this is Open Line. It's your chance to join in and ask the experts. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call. Speaking of experts, let me introduce you to our guest tonight. We have Rachel Painter and also Rebecca Norman from the University of Tennessee. The extension ladies thank you for being here thank you thank Great you for having us here. I am so glad to have this conversation it's something a little off the beaten path than what we normally do so I'm always up for that Great. before we get into your expertise you've brought along a story which I also yes. love uh, the USDA says there are about 28,000 female farmers in Tennessee yeah. but of course there's always potential and opportunity for more Charles Denny is going to tell us about some efforts that are underway to do that Building a bouquet, pretty cut flowers collected by the handful. Colby Nicewander usually works on her family's Lawrence County cattle farm, but here she learns horticulture, one of the ladies in the Cultivate Conference, Women in Agriculture. Nice Wanderer appreciates the support here and is willing to mentor others. There are women that spoke out last night that are just interested in, it, in getting started and, and I was there not long ago so um, I would love to be a resource for them if they need help. Um, we've got women who have chicken houses, who have um, goat operations, sheep operations, um, cut flower operations. TSU and UT Extension coordinated the conference, lining up speakers and hands-on demonstrations like this soil testing. Another session you could attend, how to handle cattle on horseback, limiting animal stress. A number of female Extension agents were involved and believe they can make a connection here with other women. But it's been something that's heavy on all of our hearts to try and just reach those women who may have questions they may not feel comfortable asking or they just don't really understand something and it's easier just to hear that from another woman. The USDA's most recent census shows women make up about 36% of all American farmers, but that's a 27% increase in the past decade. And a number of women turned to agriculture during the pandemic as a new way to earn a living. Ashley Stokes has worked as a veterinarian, beef industry partner, and now serves as dean of UT Extension. She believes when it comes to agriculture, more women are seeking educational opportunities to grow their skill set. And whether it's within a family operation that they expand what they do, um, take a more prominent role or as entrepreneurs uh, on, on their own with agriculture. So, um, so women in agriculture, I think it's always had a very special place. Farm life is hard work embraced only by the hardy in spirit. But one clear message here, be watching out for future generations of women in agriculture. I do all of our book work. That's how I kind of started helping, but then I also, I'm planting. I drive the grain cart for my dad um, day in, day out. I have two daughters, um, six and four. They're right there with us, helping us do everything, and I can't imagine life any other way. Extension plans more of these conferences in the future. The theme here was about growing, as in flowers, crops, and livestock, but also growing opportunities and the number of women who will be there to make it happen. This is Charles Denny reporting. Such a good segue into our topic tonight, which is women in agriculture. It is often a family business, as that mm -hmm. lady referred to, that you learn starting very young, even four years old, you are helping out with the chores. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to see that this is becoming more recognized, that women are knee deep in this operation. Before we get into this topic, though, mm -hmm. I would love for our guest to, to know you better. So yes. Rachel, go ahead. Tell okay. us about yourself. Uh, well, my name is Rachel Painter, and I'm an extension specialist with the Center 
Center for Profitable Agriculture. So I help our farmers uh, develop their value-added enterprises every day. So that might look like um, exploring a diversification opportunity. Mm -hmm. It might look like um, understanding regulations better, um, just to make sure that they know um, all they can to make more informed decisions moving forward. Great. And Rebecca? Mm -hmm. So I work as an agriculture and natural resource agent. Most of my program work has been in livestock and forages. And so those folks that are interested in a livestock operation, maybe not sure how to start, I work with them. The experienced producers, I work with them. It can be classroom instruction. It can be going on farm, walking the farm with them, you know, hearing how they do things and, and uh, what things they might improve on. And it's a real relationship business, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm, you could say, mm -hmm. is what we're in. Which I think probably farming and agriculture are in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. You're both women in agriculture. How did you both get your start? Go ahead. Well, I was very interested in our agriculture businesses so I went to the University of Tennessee and studied agriculture economics um, and there I really uh, gained a passion for helping people explore their ideas for new businesses and um, just knowing more about you know how do we create a budget mm -hmm. how do we know uh, everything we can yeah. before moving forward mm -hmm. um, and I think that resonates a lot with women in agriculture because we want to know everything before we start yes um, and that's not necessary you know start uh, get your hands dirty start asking questions um, and learn you know as much as you can yes but you don't have to know everything <laughs> some some experience comes on the job yes yeah yes Rebecca what about you how did you get your start well my relatives farm in West Tennessee and so my dad was a pastor and we would I'd spend all the time I could on their farm we'd go mm -hmm. visit they had row crops they had cattle they had feeder pigs and I remember thinking as a kid, I want to do this when oh, I grow so up. Neat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so <clears throat> I ended up not farming. My parents had a small farm. They eventually sold. But I wanted to uh, marry farming with helping people. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to do that within, in, within extension. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's helping yeah. people every single day. Absolutely. Make their dreams come true. Yep. Okay, we already have to take a quick break. We're going to do that, and then we are going to jump into this topic, women in agriculture. You have thoughts, experience, questions? Give us a call. We're coming right back.